Over the last year, I've asked several hundred Muslims one simple question. What is your best evidence that Islam is true? About 90% simply ignore the question, apparently having nothing to offer. A good chunk of the remainder attack Christianity, which obviously is not evidence that Islam is true either. Of the few that actually try to respond, most point to so-called scientific miracles in the Quran. So grab your microscope and grab your flask and let's put the Quran's scientific miracles to the test. One ancient creation text has the gods declare, May the water be taken away, emptied out so that the plate of the earth may be created, may it be gathered and become level. A description of what occurred follows shortly. Then they called forth the mountains from the water. Straight away the great mountains came to be. But how did the earth's land actually come to be? When we turn to science, we find articles like Earth's continental land masses created in short, fast bursts. But this conclusion was only reached in 2000. How could ancient people have known that the land not only emerged from a primordial sea, but did so straight away? Wouldn't pre-scientific people have thought the land always existed and, if anything, thought that water was created later? The author of this text must have had divine guidance, or maybe even was God himself. This is a scientific miracle that proves the creation account came from God. Do you agree? If so, congratulations, you just endorsed the Popol Vu, the Mayan creation account. Most critics of Islam approach the subject of scientific miracles in the Quran by pointing out some obvious scientific errors. This is a valid strategy. If unknowable science in the text supposedly proves its divine origin, then scientific errors must also disprove that theory. I, however, want to take a different approach. I want to take the hypothesis seriously for the moment and consider the possibility that the Quran contains knowledge of facts unknown during Muhammad's time, but since discovered, or what could be called scientific foreknowledge or mislabeled scientific miracles. As the example from the Popol Vuh shows, however, we need some ground rules. We need a way to distinguish between a legitimate insight of the Quran and us creatively reading meaning into the text that simply isn't there, and a lucky guess. I would like to propose a few rules, which I will use to examine proposed scientific miracles in future videos. Muslims, I hope you will help establish the rules so we can both be sure they're fair. Here are my proposals, but let me know what you think in the comment section. Criteria number one. The insight must actually be true. This seems obvious enough, but I've seen many examples of so-called scientific miracles that don't even get the science right. Scientific consensus can change, so maybe you can hope and pray that it will. But obviously, if a claim is wrong according to current scientific consensus, it can't be used as evidence that the Quran contains advanced scientific knowledge. Criteria number two. The supposed insight must go beyond what anyone could discover from careful observation using 7th century technology. If a human being could easily determine something on their own, the presence of such knowledge in the Quran obviously can't count as evidence that divine foreknowledge was at work. Criteria number 3. Claimed knowledge must be new to the Quran. It is well known in academic circles that the Quran copies from dozens of existing sources 
and incorporates lots of common knowledge of the 7th century, all of which it calls revelation. Muslims well deny that, of course. But even if we pretend the Quran wasn't simply copying from other sources, it obviously can't count as evidence for special knowledge of the Quran if other sources that predate its revelation contain the same knowledge. Criteria number four. The Quran must actually say what the apologist claims it says. This is the trickiest criteria because it's where the miracle usually happens. Human beings have an amazing amount of creativity and can see whatever they want to see in a text. Knowing the answer one wants to find, it's easy to imagine it's there regardless of what the text says. Christians do this occasionally, Hindus do it too, and as my opening example illustrates, it can be done with virtually any text. However, Muslims seem especially prone to it, so much so that we even have a term for it, the miracle of reinterpretation. If we're going to avoid fooling ourselves into seeing something that isn't there, we need some sort of check on our exegesis. I propose that we look to the classical tafsir. Hundreds and hundreds of Muslims wrote extensive commentaries on the Quran before the onset of the modern scientific age. Surely, if a Quran verse actually says something, at least a few of these faithful Muslims must have seen the claimed meaning in the text. Especially since the book brags over and over and over again about how perfectly clear it is. Of course, we wouldn't expect them to use modern terminology, but the ideas those terms represent should be there. Let's take the Big Bang as an example. We wouldn't expect anyone to say this verse teaches the Big Bang, of course, since the terminology hadn't been invented. But we could reasonably expect someone to say something like, the world began as a single point and has been expanding outward ever since, or the world began as an explosion followed by rapid expansion, or something else along those lines. And ideally, at least two sources should reach the same conclusion so we can be confident that someone wasn't simply imagining their own ideas into the text, which were later accepted by scientific consensus. If a text doesn't actually say what is claimed, as evidenced by the opinions of pre-modern Muslims, then the only miracle at work is human creativity, and it can't be evidence of the divine nature of the Quran. Criteria number five. The supposed knowledge must go beyond a lucky guess. If there are only two possibilities, for example, no divine knowledge is necessary to explain a correct answer. In other words, if we're going to posit something as evidence of divine authorship, it must be improbable that a human being guessing at random could have landed on the right answer by chance. Those are my criteria. I think they're reasonable and fair. But let me know what you think in the comments section. Muslims, I especially want to hear your opinion. Object now, or you'll lose your chance to avoid post hoc reasoning when you see your favorite miracles destroyed. Also, let me know what miracles you think are the best evidence of divine authorship of the Quran so we can be sure to address them in future videos. Thanks for watching.